hello everyone so in this video we are going to talk about uh, some of the fatal conditions fatal illnesses of the high altitude we already discussed about ams and cms in this video we will start with hape that is high altitude pulmonary edema so we can we have two types of hape that is a classical hape and the reentrant hape in the case of classical hape we have a person who was living in low altitude and visited in an area of high altitude and got the illness reentrant hape is a condition where a person who was earlier living in high altitude migrated to an area of low altitude and revisited to an area of high altitude and got the sickness so because of reentry a person got the sickness so we studied about two types of hip let's try to understand what is actually happening in hip we already studied that at an altitude of more than 2500 meter the patient can get ams cms uh, because of hyperbaric hypoxia now hyperbaric hypoxia in certain conditions okay in some person can we know that hypoxia everywhere in body is going to lead to vasodilation but we also need to remember that uh in except for in the case of pulmonary vasculature pulmonary capillaries we have vasoconstriction so hypoperic hypoxia is going to lead to pulmonary vasoconstriction and this is what is going to lead to pulmonary hypertension the symptom complexes that are seen in the case of hip are because of pulmonary hypertension these are there will be dry cough okay the patient will have exertional dyspnea he will be coming with an complaint he will be having a complaint of exertional dyspnea the person can have blood in sputum hemoptysis because hypoxia also lead to sympathetic stimulation we are going to have a patient who is having tachycardia and tachypnea okay on investigation you will see that there is alveolar edema on x ray and arterial oxygen will be raised the treatment modality is that we advise the patient for an immediate descent from an area and if the patient cannot descend immediately we advise to take an oxygen therapy nifedipine 20 mg 4 times a day is advised okay hyperbaric oxygen can be given uh, dexamethasone and sal salmeterol are of some value because they help in opening the airway okay another condition so this is about the hip okay a bit about the hip and this is an important condition let's go into the next condition that is haze that is high altitude cerebral edema now the things are clear we studied that hypoxia is going to lead to vasodilation everywhere except for pulmonary vasculature so here also hypoxia will lead to vasodilation in the cerebral vasculature this is what is going to lead to cerebral edema and the symptom complexes seen here are because of cerebral edema so already we know about the ams symptoms which will also be seen in this condition these symptoms are nausea vomiting dizziness okay and other symptoms like uh, sleep disturbances uh he will have anorexia we already discussed this this in the ams symptoms the other symptoms which are more pronounced in haze because of edema okay which is pronounced are ataxia okay altered consciousness visual disturbances and confusion so these are the two condition which we need to remember the other condition are other thing we need to know about haze is that uh, the signs which we see which are more classical okay because of raised uh, high raised because of cerebral edema these are on fundoscopy we will see papillary edema and retinal hemorrhages the treatment of his is that we advise descent to the patient we give dexamethasone 8 mg followed by 4 mg for 4 times in a day hyperbaric oxygen is requ required and if the patient is not able to descend uh, quickly we advise patient to take o2 therapy by a portable bag okay this is what is a uh, treatment of uh, his let's talk about some minor condition which can occur and are common sometimes that is high altitude retinal hemorrhage now this condition is seen in 30% of trekkers who visit to high altitude more than 5000 meter now this condition is generally asymptomatic until there is retinal hemorrhage involved the macula area which is less common okay so because this is seen in 30% of trekkers so we can consider it a common condition uh it is asymptomatic and it is a reversible condition next condition is venous thrombosis a patient visiting more than 6000 meter of an altitude and there he is having no activity he is dehydrated and plus he is on ocp this condition can flare up and can lead to venous thrombosis the last thing which need to be differentiated from the hape because classically hape also has the dry cough here the patient uh, uh, of refractory cough can actually have dry cough now this dry cough occur because at high altitude we have a cool air okay cold air uh, and generally patient is uh, rapidly ventilating so he goes for mouth breathing that can that can cause dehydration 
so these are some high altitude illness so what we talked about was uh, let's revise it briefly we talk about physiology okay of high altitude we talked how hyperbaric hypoxia leads to acclimatization and how respiratory alkalosis occurs and then how acidosis occurs and then how ventilation is uh, increased we talked other factors stimulating it we talked about acute mountain sickness uh, then we talked about the chronic mountain sickness and treatment of these conditions. Now we talked about some fatal conditions like HAEP, HAES, okay, their treatment modality, high altitude retinal hemorrhage, venous thrombosis and refractory curve. So these are the conditions we needed to know about illnesses at high altitude. Thanks for watching.